Why is this important? Because till now, it is not your personal recognition that I project the world. Nekta is telling you only, Nisargadatta Maharaj is telling you, Atmananda is telling you, Sindhu doesn't know it from her recognition. She sees, oh, I have a craving and I projected this event of going out and having that chocolate ice cream. We are not talking about the mini projection. We are talking about the real projection of the entire world. That has to become your own personal recognition. I can do this like theory if you want. I can just rush from one chapter to the other. For me, good. My videos are done. But that's not the intention of Gurukul. The intention of Gurukul is to see everything experientially. So when you really complete the journey, you have really completed the journey. Get more interested in yourself, fall in love with yourself. Maybe the love with yourself is not enough and Ekta cannot push you to love. No, you cannot force somebody to love, right? Could you force your spouse also to love you more than he or she loves you? No, you cannot force anybody to love, right? So I cannot force you to love yourself. Only when you love yourself so much and this is it. This is it. How? When you fell in love with your sweetheart, that sweetheart was your the center of your universe. This has to become the center of your attention, the center of your universe. Everything else is at the periphery, not so important. Then automatically you start seeing it because Ekta is not manufacturing it. You are also not manufacturing it. It is. The reality is. Only when I have so much love for it, I look. And when I look, I really see. It's that simple. Yeah. So now, high time. Start seeing, do I really love this person or am I only faking it? What is that called? Infatuation. Is it infatuation or is it love? <laughs> is it that college sweetheart kind of journey for you? Or is this that real seven janam ka marriage, whatever, whatever, love? Huh, the body exists, no? The body is still alive. Suppose this body has a shelf life of 90 years and the person gets enlightened at 40. The remaining years, 50 years, have to be, whatever, exhausted. So the regular impression will come up. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I need to use the restroom. Yeah. There are those basic impressions of the body. The body is getting older. Oh, the stomach has a problem. It's not digesting as it digested 20 years ago. So all those things are going to continue. So the basic rajas, tamas and sattva, those basic gunas of the body-mind will continue. So those impressions can never come down to zero. Until the body mind dies. Is that very, very clear? Yeah. Yes. Plus, the way Ekta speaks, can that change? That cannot change. Can Ekta's voice change? No. At, at the most, it will become a little feeble and fragile in, in the 70s, in the 80s, the senior age. But the style of the body, yeah, which we actually uh, put in the bracket of the mind's personality, the way the person speaks, the I cannot start suddenly speaking Chinese. No, I have no idea. And I am going to speak the language that this body mind was trained. So I'm giving you two, three examples like that. Similarly, 
you have a makeup in because of your surroundings or your cultural conditioning your whatever language conditioning those things those are also impressions right and those are not going anywhere they will die with the body mind not before so basic these basics will not go anywhere very very clear even after enlightenment they don't go the only thing is i recognize i am not this i am not this body mind that speaks only in this english language that who doesn't know hindi very well who doesn't know marathi very well or doesn't know chinese at all this association with the body minds characteristics completely breaks away it is just functioning it is functioning like a film you watch a film for some time you become one with the character and then a point comes when you separate away from the character yeah just like that you separate away from this body mind and it continues according to its remaining impressions which are the basic impressions of the deha buddhi but i do not associate with it theek okay? hai so most of you have this wrong kind of uh, thing that thoughts will completely cease no 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 thoughts will not cease completely i put this in flock also thoughts cannot cease completely it is not a possibility till this body mind is alive and kicking how can thoughts completely go away even the sensation of hunger is a thought yes even the feeling oh it's cold the body is feeling cold is a thought everything is a thought and if you really understood last week's chapter you would have understood this body is a thought it does not really exist i have no proof of the existence of this physical body of this mind last week's chapter was very essential it was the first chapter first step into ajatvada in atmanivritti scripture so if you understood last week's chapter very clearly you will understand everything is a thought everything yeah beginning from that no thingness feel the moment the sense of i am came up the recognition of myself when the consciousness recognizes itself that's a thought it's not saying i recognize myself it's not even saying i it's just a recognition abhas hone ka ehsas so that itself is the first thought from that whatever dreams emerge sight sound smell taste touch each of it is a thought everything is a thought every image is a thought so the body that i had in the dream that was also a thought the mind that i had in the dream that was also a thought everything is a thought from that i move into the waking state the body the physical body the sensation of heaviness of the physical body lying on the bed still just the eyes have opened up that also is a thought the room is a thought everything has been just projected out did you recognize this aspect of that chapter everything is a thought there is nothing other than thought i have a picture to show you you see in a projector yeah this projector has light inside it and it projects light it projects light and 
the images appear on the screen okay now whatever those images are we look at that later what is the projector really it is the source of the light correct now you think you put yourself into that kind of a, a situation where you think i am the projector i am the source of this knowledge and i am projecting thoughts yes you are a special kind of projector that can project thoughts and you the projector itself is knowledge knowledge is projecting thoughts so what do you see outside thoughts you cannot see anything else but thoughts you don't experience anything else but thoughts just like if this projector was alive and it was looking at its own light going out what would the projector say oh it's all light the projector would not say oh there's a hero on the screen there's a heroine there's a villain the projector will say no the hero is also light the heroine is also light the villain is light the good man is light the bad man is light the child is light the parent is light the whole situation is light money is light there is nothing but light that is what the projector would say what will you the special projector that projects thoughts say the husband is thought the child is thought the mother the father is thought the wife is thought the money is thought the job is thought the happy situation outside is also thought the sad situation is also thought nothing but thought there is only thought i am a special kind of projector that just projects thought is this very clear yeah so this entire world is nothing but thought every morning i project every night i halt or i pause this projection again next morning i project so the main thing of ajatvada the, the step from drishti srishti vada to ajatvada is experientially seeing this projection if you don't experientially see you cannot move to ajatvad yes it's no point memorizing this it does not telling you anything from memory it is just talking what is her experience she is trying to explain this best in her words yeah but i have to experience it in my own personal recognition ekta's word should not be enough for me to say i recognize it do you get this yeah i'm not a proponent of belief no ways so if you really are serious about your path inward i have to face inward all the time yeah. once i see it very clearly in my coming from the deep sleep from my only state of no thingness where the projector is off i only see the first light come on you know when the projector starts the light is not bright it was is very blurry yeah that's the sense of i am and then i see it becoming brighter and brighter and then the final projection from the dreaming to the waking state oh i see myself come on every morning and i see myself shut down every night then i know for sure yes everything is thought is this clear what i'm saying is clear yeah so it has to become experiential recognition that is why i don't force and i don't run through the chapters i give you some time to really experientially recognize it
this is exactly what I wanted to say through the virtual headset uh, analogy that I gave. Uh-huh. But you you went even one step closer by calling yourself a projector mm-hmm. because the projector box. We all are the same projector box. Mm-hmm. What is different is those cloud of impressions in each projector box is that are the only so called different things which makes the movie that's coming out as Ekta or Swati. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, now I can see much more clearly how everything is a thought. Yes. So this yeah. is what I really want you to go deep into, experientially. Recognize it. Make your husband or wife sit in front of you today. Yeah. Now you go to the real problems of life. First, make your spouse sit in front of you. He, she can talk whatever they want. They can continue. And you let your body mind engage in that interaction. But take that step back and watch. Isn't this a thought? Am I not projecting this? And not just what this body mind is saying right now to him or her. Isn't he also just a thought? Do I have any proof that this guy exists or this woman exists? How much ever you touch, you hug, still there is no proof. It's like a 4D movie going on. Yeah, you go to an IMAX and you see those 3D movies, you know, those Avatar and Matrix and all those things coming at you. You feel like, oh, this is so real. It's exactly like that. And Vaita says, this is a 4D movie. Yeah, How four dimensions? Length, breadth, height and time. There is time added here, which is not there in a 3D movie. Yeah. So, this is a four dimensional movie going on with my family, with my kit and kin. Yeah. Recognize this. So, moment to moment to moment, you have to actually start seeing this is all thought. This is thought. This is thought. This session is a thought. Ekta is a thought. There is no proof for you whether Ekta really exists or not. You have no proof. You could very well be dreaming. You've created some Ekta in your own head. Who knows whether she exists? So, to go there, first you have to see it in the night. The beginning of the projection is very important. It's essential because it will make your understanding firm. It will make your understanding, yes, this is my truth. I know it. And once that becomes very clear, then will you take some big COVID pandemic as whole? Such a big thing in my life. Or some financial problem in the house, you'll make it a big thing. No. A problem with the spouse, with the mother-in-law, with the father-in-law will not be anything. Just a thought. Just a thought. Just a thought. I projected this. I projected this. Nice. Nice film. You'll just watch the film. This is the only way to get out of suffering. There is no other way to get out of the suffering of body-mind world. Yeah. So this is the only way. What is the way? See reality as it is. Not as you have imagined it to be. The projection is imagination. That is why my projection is different from her projection, is different from his projection. My imagination, no? I imagined a tiger and I am expecting the tiger should be in her life, not in my life. Your tiger, your imagination, why will he growl at him or her? So whenever I project anything, I experience it back as perception. Projection is the karma, perception back is the karma phalam. Yeah. 
I cannot but experience whatever I project. So there are all these wonderful sayings, no? That if somebody is saying something bad to you, don't worry. They are going to only go through it. How does that work? You unnecessarily start feeling bad. Oh, she said bad to me. She said bad to me. It's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of her or his mind. Why? Because it has been projected by that person that way. And that's why he perceives you like that. So his perception itself is his karma phalam. He's going through the churning and suffering in his head thinking you are like that. You did this to me. You did that to me. Do you even have proof that that person exists? So crazy. But he doesn't get it. Now you get it. Oh, it's my thought and back the perception back is the reflection of my thought. That is why on the Buddha's path, we say, just pure vinyana. You cut out the sanya. What is sanya? All that, I, it comes back and I start processing the data. And then I say, this is like this. I put that label, I put that label. You cut out the sanya. Pure vinyana. Pure vinyana, I am just seeing whatever I have projected. I am not taking anything back. And those who have not done Buddha, you can watch the videos. This is like in the first one or two videos itself. Buddha begins here. Now do you understand why I say Buddha is like really high level? First video is this. Vinyana, Sanya, Vedana, Sankhara. Do you remember? Yeah. This is where Buddha begins. He doesn't even go through the initial knowledge that brings you till here. Okay. So, start recognizing. Very, very important. I recognize the projection from deep sleep to dreaming to waking. The finale is thought is also consciousness. That is pure Ajatavada, that there is only consciousness. Yeah, but this also has to be recognition. In words, you memorize it today, you'll forget it tomorrow. It's pointless. When it becomes your own recognition, then there is no, no chance to forget it. It is what I see, it is what I am. Yeah, that is the meaning of experiential recognition. That is the completion of Ajatvad. Last week, we just stepped into the beginning of Ajatvad. That see, everything is nothing but thought and myself. Nothing else. Everything is thought. So now you have to start actually implementing it at home. Now it's no more looking out the window and implementing it on the strangers. Yeah, that part is over. Now, hardcore Ajatavada. So see it with your son, your daughter, your parent, your mother-in-law, father-in-law, siblings, spouse, your money, your house. Just a thought, just a thought, just a thought. The name of the technique is Brahma Abhyas. Yeah. What is Brahma Abhyas? I talk only about consciousness. If I speak, I speak only about consciousness. Yes, I think, I think only about consciousness. I want to watch something on YouTube. I watch only about consciousness. I want to read a book. I read only about consciousness. It's Brahma Abhyas. That is, this is called. This is a very strong Abhyas taken up by the monks and nuns who 
go to an Advaita ashram, they isolate themselves from the world, they take up Brahma Bhyas. Yes. So this helps them break into their own selves, you know, break into the dreaming and the deep sleep and it, it's not happening normally, then the, the guru always gives this to the sadhak. You keep everything else out. Take this as your tapas. Yeah, and then keep it time bound. I'm going to do this only for one month. Yeah, so you take it up time bound one month Brahma Bhyas, which means no samsaric indulgence. I've become a monk or a nun for one month. Yeah, it's very strong tapa that you take on. It's your choice. I'm not making this a mandatory homework. It's up to you. Which means no samsaric indulgence. I do my best. I talk about Brahman. I, I write about Brahman. I read about Brahman. Uh, if I watch something, some some TV, something only about Brahman, or if somehow the spouse has started something which is not about Brahman on TV, you only think about Brahman and try to relate it only to Brahman. It is only thought. It is only a projection of consciousness. Do you see that? You relate everything to Brahman. Because obviously your children are not going to follow that at home. Yeah? So whatever they do, you in your, the way you look at it, everything has to be connected back to Brahman. It's called Brahma Bhyas. It is an intense tapa. Yeah? Which means you have to keep away from all kinds of gossip, all kinds of indulgence in the world that can pull you away, whichever is your weak point. Huh? You see, some people have news as their weak point. They get pulled into news and finish. Next two, three hours, they are watching news. Who killed whom? In which country? What bad things are going on? As if it really contributes a lot into your life. My God. If I don't watch it, that country is going to stop running. No. The country is going to continue. Stop wasting your two, three precious hours. So where you see your weak points. Some people have movies as their indulgence. Totally lost in Shah Rukh Khan and Amitabh Bachchan and Brad Pitt. See if you are lost into all these movies and stuff. I don't know what are those video games you will play at this age. I don't think so. But if you are still lost in video games and computer games... See what is it that is taking your time away. Intense tapa means intense tapa. Then I will, even if the mind is crying and whining, let it cry and whine. That is the meaning of tapa. Even if the mind is crying and whining and saying, why did I join Ekta's class? All this tapa, nonsense. We let it whine, let it cry. You keep crying and then you pick up an Advaita book and you kind of calm down the mind. You find your ways. Yes, Brahma Bhyas is very strict tapa. Yes, all set for that. Why is this important? Because everything is a thought is not really my um, direct, clear understanding because I have not yet seen the projection. Some of you have started. I know some of you already shared that you have started very clearly seeing how you projected sound in your dream, how you projected uh, touch in your dream. Yeah. So I know some of you have started seeing it. Very good. Now, you are taking that understanding into the journal. Whatever understanding you have written in the journal was Advaita level 2. Drishti Srishti Vada. Where there was still duality. You were still talking about I and that. I and that. 
Yeah, now you are seeing everything is nothing but thought. Thought is nothing but me. Knowledge. Yes. So we are shifting our stand from I, the witness consciousness, to I, the awareness, the primordial awareness or the pure consciousness. Do you get it? Till now what was our process? We had shifted our stand from I am not the body, I am not the mind to I am the witness of the body, I am the witness of the mind. At Ajatvada level what are we doing? One more step beyond now. I am not even the witness. I am that in which the sense of I am or the witness arises and falls. And I see this, I recognize this, I recognize this happening. Yeah? So now I'm going to drop this because this is also temporary. This comes and goes, this I. That into which it comes and goes, that is who I am. Ajatvada. Is this very clear? Very experiential. I'm not talking any theory here. So now you're going to do the same journal from Ajatavada level. You don't need to uh, share now after every line with me. You just keep writing. Mostly you're going to be writing, this is a thought, this is a thought, this is thought, this is nothing but projection of me. But the more you write it, it means the more you're seeing it in your personal life. Till the time you clearly see my husband, my wife, my parent, my child, my money, my house, my car, my career, all of it is just a projected thought. And the thought is nothing but me, that space of knowledge. So have you moved to that level in your understanding where you Recognize I is just emptiness. Yeah. Now can we stop talking about this body mind as I? Stop referring to this body mind as I? It's okay with the people in the world for transactional purposes when I'm talking. Okay, whatever I you understand, that's good. But when you are speaking, you should know when I am saying I. I am just using it so this person understands what I refer to is that field of awareness, the field of pure consciousness. Yeah, This has to be done experientially at home now. In my main training ground, my test ground is my home. Yeah, I go to office only 8-10 hours with a very beautiful costume and very beautiful mask. Jim Carrey's mask we have on in office. The moment you step into your house, your mask falls off. It just melts away, it disappears. Costume drops off, disappears. The true you is there. This home ground, this is where I have to see it. Yes, very clear. So, the grey journal is your Ajatavada journal. We'll start working on this journal this week. But this journal cannot be done without the Brahma Abhyas. Brahma Abhyas was the first part of the work that I was going to give you after a month. But you people are progressing very fast. So, Brahma Abhyas with that. I work on a Jatavada journal. When you look at your particular entry, you know what emotion was there when you wrote that entry. And you know what you are talking about. You might have not mentioned the word husband or wife or son or daughter but you know what you are talking about indirectly when you have written that one liner in that cell. That whole thing is going to come to you and then 
in that emotional moment to see your son as a thought, your own wife or husband as a thought, that is going, that is the exercise. The exercise is not really the words that you're typing. What you are actually going through and working on on yourself, that is what is going to come out of it. Journal is an excuse. That is not the main thing. The main thing is what happens to you. Hi, you cannot write copy paste everything as a thought. You have to actually write, oh, in this situation I was referring to my son. My son is a thought. In this situation I was referring to my money or my financial loss. It's just a thought, it's just a story. Yeah? Actually putting that part down where you're you're training yourself. Yes, the mind that has been so conditioned to believe this samsara is real has conditioned itself to suffer because of the samsara. Now you are making this mind unlearn. Yeah? By putting it down in the journal, the mind is going to unlearn. The mind is going to dissociate from the son, the daughter, the parent and just see it as a film, a light light falling on a screen. That's it. That's going to be the hard process for you. You will go through emotions. If you're sincerely doing it, you will go through a tough time. You might just put it down as, oh, my son is a thought. My husband is a thought. Yeah, This experiencership where I thought I was experiencing all the atrocities done by my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law is a thought. You will go through that churning within. Yeah? And then the ability to separate yourself from the churning. And see, I am the witness of the churning. And now one more step. Oh, I am that which is aware of the witness also. Yeah? That is the actual process. Not the output one line on the journal. That is good. That you do. And that is just as a reference that I went through this properly. I did a good job from my side training the mind. Is this clear? No, 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 no. That is also a part... Uh, an attribute of this Deha Buddhi. If you remember the Kabir session, I told you, I, the witness, that sense of I am, is born with the birth of the body and it dies with the death of the body. So it will continue to come up. But now I have gone beyond the sense of I am. I have gone beyond the witness. I am the awareness, that field of nothingness in which this witness arises, plays, falls, along with its object. I am that peace itself. I am swar the, that Swarupa of which this witness is made. Yes. So we are taking one more step back and it has to happen experientially. This is the harder part. It's very easy to get to the witness. Yeah? To see the witness collapse again and again and again throughout the day, that's the harder part. That's where we are going. Now one more step. You went to where? You went to the awareness, the primordial awareness, where there is nothing, just no thingness. Yeah? But even the desire comes up, it's there. It's not affecting me. It is I, the witness, that becomes the experiencer of whatever, the homework writing, maybe that's what you were doing. And it starts doing its work along with the body and mind. I remain as the awareness. Yes, this is what we have to see moment to moment to moment to moment. And it's very realizable. 
it's very experiential. Yes, so that's where we are moving to. Good. The five elements is not part of the homework. You will not see those. You will only see sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, depending on whatever the content of your dream is. If it's just thoughts, then you won't even see images. Some people have just thoughts, don't, don't see a particular image. And that's fine. That is also a dream. You'll see there is no logic logic in the thought. Yeah? When you get out of the dream, it's not that you can really logically write a paper on what you said in the dream or heard in the dream. No, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Suddenly you're dancing on the Himalayas and something rubbish you're reading uh, from some some nonsense joke book and then suddenly you're talking Advaita to the cartoon. It, it won't make sense. There will be no coherence in your thoughts. Yeah. So, number one, don't try to find Mahabhutas. Number two, do not try to find coherence in the dream. We are not looking at that. Number three, we are not interested in contents of the dream. We are only looking at one thing. That sight, sound, smell, taste, touch is first projected in the dream state before I even come to the waking state. That is all I am aiming to know about myself. That's how I know, oh, I am the projector. I projected sight, sound, smell, taste, touch in my dreaming state and then from there it projected as a reflection into the waking state. So really dreaming state and waking state are not two different states. It's just a label that I have put because I have assumed that these eyes or the, the senses are like a boundary. Yeah, the five senses I have assumed are a boundary. Outside this boundary is the waking state and inside this boundary is the dreaming state. It's just an assumption. There is no difference inside this boundary and outside this boundary. Yeah. So the skin or the five senses along with the skin is not a boundary. Because this body itself is a projection and it is projected. First in the dream, then I wake up into the body. Clear? So sight, sound, smell, taste, touch includes the projection of this physical body. So a little different from the projector. The projector's body, physical body so called, is a part of the projection in this projector of thoughts. Yeah. So this is the real, real thing that I have to see. See, see, not I see, but see. And then only I really know myself. Super clear? Yes, and that it is the thought, it's the first thought. The I thought is the first thought. We did this in Ramana, no? So yeah. I thought is nothing but sense of I am. I thought is nothing but the witness. It is the first thought, thought about itself. Yeah, that's what the first chapter of Nisargadatta Maharaj is. It is the thought about itself, the sense of I am. Consciousness itself is the knowledge. So, it is a knowledge projector. The projector itself is knowledge. And it is only projecting itself. So, what is the projection of knowledge? We've labeled it as thought, but it is nothing but knowledge. Consciousness is knowledge. It's Swarupa is knowledge. Yeah, And we've given it the word consciousness because that 
seems alive conscious to seem alive yeah but consciousness also is nothing but a projection from its own sat aspect sat is what just being just being there is no projection in being yeah so it's like your deep sleep state there is no projection there is nothing that is the sat yeah the sat aspect and the moment the dream is projected that is the chid aspect clear clear yeah. see how the projector comes on we switch the power on the transition from off to on transition the transition has the sequence of sight sounds smell taste touch come in how does that happen to me yeah when you see that see that then you be get get a very firm conviction very very firm clarity that this sansara is an illusion jagat mithya because it's projected and i see the projection i see it see it i don't assume it i don't uh, memorize it because the scripture says so or because ekta says so but i see it i see it every morning i know it that's why i say yeah so the transition is important from the off to the on seeing that then nobody can take this away from me then it's my wisdom then it's my truth not ekta's truth not atmananda's truth not nisargadatta maharaj's truth it is sindhu's truth because sindhu saw it go from off to on you see what i'm saying do the journal yes <laughs> it's important for me to know whether really this is happening to you or your ego is fooling you that can also happen no that also you have experienced in the past the ego fools us and we go on another tangent believing oh i know it all and then very nice when one little showdown happens in the house all your advaita knowledge goes taking a deep dive into the valley then you came to know your true colors yeah i know no what happened to the i know yes i got so involved in this i became the doer and the experiencer and finish what advaita advaita out the window then you you don't want to get into that situation so be very very cautious very cautious before you reach that point where you say i know it all very cautious about this can never say i know it all right correct you can never say it that's a thought yeah. correct put it down in the journal <laughs> okay <laughs> don't assume the journey is over any time <laughs> yeah even assuming that the journey is over is indirectly the ego saying i know it all it's just keep just keep putting it down like uh, once your you put your hand into the fire you never put it again you know your hand is going to burn but the first time you put it you were a little kid you had no idea yeah you were so inquisitive and attracted to the golden color of the fire you put it in once you're bitten you don't do it again right just like that you've all been bitten before by the ego so now be very very careful very cautious very cautious i'd rather get there slower than jump in and say the journey is over yeah okay start exploring this more don't assume i already am there the moment you assume finish you'll stop learning you'll stop growing so don't go that way anybody i'm not telling her i'm telling everyone yeah the moment you assume yes i'm there this is the ego jumping in don't get into that story mind has many ways myriad ways of distracting us from the path so don't go that way 
again and again dive in explore dive in explore until you become 1000% sure okay till that time no assumptions that i already get it you're done with your questions yeah again reminder number one brahma bhyas your brahma bhyas begins now number two along with that is the tapa to remain away from all your attractions and aversions whatever that is you figure that part out yeah the tapa is very important then only it goes hand in hand with brahma bhyas number three on your bedside put up a reminder a chit or something and you be aware that i do not sleep only the body mind sleeps that's enough one liner reminder is sufficient everything else will follow yeah, and don't get feverish about it it will happen on its own and you will not see all five senses in one dream do not expect that yeah it's different i have years of seeing it that's why i can see it that way you will see parts of dreams and that's okay in your dream might there might be only sight and sound in some dream you are eating food so there is only taste and smell so it depends on the dream theek okay? hai yeah? so don't be feverish to see all of them in one go however i see it at least let me know that i am projecting the world first in my dream state Yes, and then only I come out of the border of the skin, which is also another thought that this is the waking state. Yeah, so side all the five senses and the skin I have assumed as a big wall between the dream and the waking state. I break this wall and come out. So is this really a wall? There is no wall here. Assumed, just a thought. Yes. most important part start seeing everybody everything in your life as a thought then only will you be able to put it in your journal properly don't put it just for the sake of sending to ekta that's not the way we do the journal yeah to actually see transformation in this body mind in its attitude and in its behavior both in terms of brahma abhyas um when there is a need transactional need we still continue to do that right like at work you can't talk about consciousness hey you're not hard but yeah. i i think about it i'm all the time yeah. am i the witness when the body of veda is continuing to do this particular task whatever the task is at work Yeah, when the mind is involved in this particular thing, can I remain as the witness? The constant um, at the back of the mind, kind of, you know how um, maybe it doesn't apply to all of us. Both the examples don't apply to both to all of us, but I'll just give them a when when a woman is pregnant. even if she's doing the housework there is this constant reminder that of the baby in the womb there is this constant thing at the back of the mind yeah if you've ever held like a village woman a pot on your head filled with water and if you're walking talking going back to the house that constant thing at the back of your mind that you know is this balanced is this balanced is this balanced Do you understand what that would be? To constantly have that thing, the pot is balanced, or for a woman, the constant attention to taking care of the baby in the womb. That constant thing that is called Brahma Bhyas. The constant knowingness of I am Brahman is Brahma Bhyas. Constant throughout whatever work I am doing. I had 
another example uh, that could apply for most yeah. of them is the teen- teenage infatuation if you think about <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> when you had a crush you woke up thinking of that person you slept with the thinking of that person and all day was back of your mind uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. like your childhood sweetheart yeah so brahman is your childhood sweetheart keep thinking about brahman the way you thought about your childhood sweetheart all the time early in the morning all day at work even mummy was shouting at you you are thinking about your boyfriend or girlfriend yeah, it didn't matter what situation was one drama going on in the house you were thinking about him or her very faithful very loyal yeah brahman is that childhood sweetheart of yours fall in love with brahman okay that is brahma bhyas very clear now yeah. monks and nuns would not be given that kind of example <laughs> but we are householders so we can take that example <laughs> okay brahma bhyas very important along with it tapa goes hand in hand hmm? hand in hand 